Let's paint these adorable pumpkins. Happy fall, everybody. I have a super fun project for you. If you wanna try watercolor paint, these happy pumpkins are very easy to paint and I'm gonna go through this with you step by step. Remember, you can change the colors of anything. You can change the faces. You can do it in your style. And just like a pumpkin, everybody's art is different and everybody's art is unique. And however you do it, it's gonna be awesome. So let's go. Let's start by getting out our supplies. It's always good to be prepared. Let's get watercolor paint, a brush, a piece of watercolor paper, some salt, I'll tell you why we need that later, a white crayon, which is pretty important, a paper towel, and two water cups, one for mixing water into your paint and one for cleaning your paintbrush. So you'll always have one water cup that is clean. You can use tape if you wanna tape down your paper or make a border on your art. These are what my pumpkins look like, but remember yours can be different. Everyone has their own style of doing art and don't ever feel bad about what your art looks like. We're gonna stop here and do a short intermission so that you can very lightly sketch out your moon and pumpkins. The next slide has a picture of what it looks like. You can screenshot it and print it or you can go to my website and print it right from there. Go ahead and trace it. Don't feel bad, tracing is not cheating. Let's get started. Make sure that your paper is on a desk that's comfortable for you to work on and you are ready to go. Get out your white crayon. You are gonna use your white crayon to color in your moon and you're gonna make stars all over the sky around your pumpkin shape. So, oh, my, my crayon broke, but that's okay. Happens all the time. You're gonna color your moon in white. You won't be able to see it, but just do your best. Color it in as well as you can and when you're done coloring in your moon, you are going to make stars and little dots and sparkles all over the sky with your white crayon. The reason that we are doing this is because watercolors and crayons do not like each other. When we paint over this crayon stuff with our dark or bright colored watercolors, the wax in the crayon will actually repel the watercolors, meaning that the watercolors are running away from the crayons. And the white will show up through the paint and it looks really cool. We got our crayon down, so watch this. I'm gonna get some water and I'm gonna put lots and lots of water in my purple. And I'm gonna mix a new color for myself. I'm mixing purple and then I'm gonna grab some blue and I'm gonna make a nice dark purplish blue. I'm going to use lots and lots of water, more water than you think so that it spreads out really easily. And I'm just gonna start going over my moon and stars where the sky is with big soft strokes. And if I find that my paint isn't spreading very well, I'm just gonna add some more water. Take your time and go around your pumpkin shapes. You're gonna fill your whole sky in. And if your color's not the same everywhere, like if it's a little bit blue in some parts and a little bit purple or a little bit black, that's perfectly okay. If you wanna make your skies different colors, you can do that too. This is the part that might be a little bit challenging as you're trying to cover a lot of space with your watercolor. Don't be afraid to just keep adding water, keep dipping it in your watercolors, and go right over that moon and all those stars that you made with your crayon. You'll start to see them popping out. They might look messy or a little bit crazy, but that is okay. What we're doing here is going to be very fun. The secret to this sky is that you want to keep it pretty wet, so if it's starting to get dry, plop some more paint and some more water onto your sky. The reason for this is because we are going to be putting salt on the painted parts of our sky. The salt also doesn't like watercolor and it pulls the watercolor away into separate directions and makes it have a really cool texture that makes it look like a night sky. See how I'm putting water on and then I'm just putting blobs of color on there? You can do the same thing. Don't worry about making the edges perfect because the edges being rough actually makes it look kind of cool. I'm gonna have you pause right here to get your salt out. Put some salt in your hand and get ready to sprinkle a little bit of salt on your wet paint. Try not to get it on the pumpkin part. Sprinkle it wherever you have a lot of paint bunched together that's pretty wet. Once you sprinkle it down, do not touch it. Don't move it with the paintbrush. Don't paint over it. Don't do anything to it. You have to be absolutely done painting the sky before you sprinkle on the salt. And you wanna make sure that your paint is wet or it might not work. Once you are done with this part, we are going to take a break and let our paint dry. I know it's hard to be patient, but you can do it. Now 
Now that your salt and your background and everything is dry, brush that salt into the garbage can and we are going to start on our pumpkins. Let's make some orange colors. You can use colors right out of your paint palette and pick an orange or you could make your own orange. And do you know what makes the color orange? Red and yellow. You can make two different oranges for two different pumpkins if you want. You can make a reddish orange for one of the pumpkins and you can make a yellowish orange for one of the other pumpkins. I like to mix my own colors so that I can have my art be super individual, but it is completely up to you. I'm starting to paint my background pumpkin first, the big pumpkin in the back. And what I'm doing is I'm just getting my whole pumpkin wet with water. And then I'm going to start plopping in that orange paint. What I like to do, and it makes it easier to spread, is to just put lots of water on my pumpkin and then take my paint and just dot it in there and spread it out softly with my brush. I'm not getting any paint on my front pumpkin, but if you want your pumpkins to be the same orange color, you can paint them at the same time. Just remember not to paint the pumpkin stem yet. I'm also putting those lines in on the pumpkin, those big lines that are on the sides of some of the pumpkins, I might make a little bit darker of an orange color. Mostly I'm using a lot of water right now and I'm just gonna start to drop in my colors. Watch how I do this, it's actually really fun. You can do as many layers as you need to to get the right orange for your pumpkin or if you're gonna make your pumpkin a different color, go for that too. Take your time and remember if your pumpkin is all blotchy and has different orange colors in different places, that's okay because that's how real pumpkins look. There's no perfect pumpkin. At least I've never seen one in my trips to the pumpkin patch. Think of how your pumpkin would look sitting in the pumpkin patch in the glowing moonlight and just paint that color. Whatever you do is not wrong and whatever you attempt is always good, even if it doesn't turn out how you like. I'm gonna make my second pumpkin a little bit brighter and a little bit more yellow. Mixing some more water in. Always make sure to use plenty of water. If you use too much water, you can crumple up your paper towel and just squish it down and pick up some of that extra water. This one has a lot more yellow in it. Work as slowly or as quickly as you need to work. Some people are really fast at doing art and some people are really slow and that is okay. I'm pretty fast at doing artwork, but it's probably because I've practiced so many years. You may have to take a minute here to let your pumpkins dry for a little while because you might find that you wanna do a couple of extra layers of color onto your pumpkin. So take your time, let it dry, go have a snack, do whatever you need to do for a little bit. If your pumpkin looks great and you wanna keep working on it, you can do that too. I'm adding my stem and I'm just grabbing a green. I like to use different colors of greens, dark greens and light greens to add a little bit of interest and fun to my pumpkin stem. Let's use that same green and add the foreground to our painting. The foreground is the part of the painting that is in front. In this case, it's gonna be the grass. The pumpkins are going to be the middle ground and the sky is going to be the background. Go ahead and add any kind of grass that you want. You can even make your grass yellow because it's fall or you can make flowers. You can do whatever you like. I'm just adding in some random colors of green to just make it look like some rough grass doesn't really matter what it looks like because it just gives the pumpkin something to sit on. Don't forget to add in lots of water as you paint and take your time. You might need a little bit of time for the grass to dry so the pumpkins don't melt into it. As you can see, my pumpkin kind of started to drip into my grass. So I just kind of squished it with my towel and got that water out and now it looks fine. I'm gonna add in some darker grass underneath the pumpkin because the pumpkin is sitting down on the ground, so it kind of creates a shadow underneath there. I added just a tiny, tiny little bit of orange into my green color, and that creates something called harmony in a painting. If you're using a lot of bright colors together, sometimes if you add one of a certain color, like if you just pick one blue and add just a teeny little drop of it to all your other colors, it will calm down all your colors so that they look like they have harmony. And I know harmony is a music word, but it's also an art word. It means everything going together in a way that looks like it's supposed to go together. It kind of gives you a calm feeling when you look at the art. Remember the word harmony next time you look at art and see 
if it has harmony or not. Some art doesn't have harmony and that, that can be on purpose too. You can get in there with really crazy colors if you want to make art that doesn't have harmony. That might be your style. I'm going to let it dry for a little while before I add the final details. Let's have another intermission. Now we're into part two. You can be done now. If you want to be done, be done. This can be your absolutely finished thing. But I am going to grab a black marker and I'm just going to get some details in here on mine. So another thing that you can do is you can start going around it with a black marker. And I added one of those curly things at the top of the stem. I have no idea what that's called. It's just a curly. And I'm going to go around my pumpkin. Just follow those lines and make nice smooth lines with your black marker. Be bold, be brave. Go over your pumpkins and I'm going to go over the stem and I'm going to go around the edges of the pumpkins and then I am going to start to add some faces to my pumpkins. I'm going to go with the old-fashioned pumpkin shapes but you can go with any shape you want. I also go around my moon and that's an option. You don't have to. You can make your stars. You can do whatever you want. I'm going to do triangles. So two triangles if you want to follow along with me another triangle for the nose. And then I am going to make a little line on the side and a line on the side of the nose and that creates the shadow. So when we carve a pumpkin, we have that inside part of the pumpkin that you can see sometimes when the light shines in. And I'm just going to color in the one side of that triangle. So there's a little bit showing. The mouth is a little bit more complicated. So I'm going to make the mouth shape. Then I'm just going to make that same little line on the side of the tooth and the same little line on the bottom right there. So I'm coloring the rest of that black part in. And you don't have to do this. It's just an extra thing that you can do. For my little guy, I'm going to give him some round eyes. And I'm going to do the same thing. Those lines are going to be on the right-hand side because the moon is on the right-hand side. And that is the part that gets the light. I'm going to do the same thing with the nose. Keep the mouth really simple. And there I have it. So much fun. I happen to have a yellow marker, so I'm just going to color those parts in. If you have a yellow marker or an orange marker, you can do the same thing. And you can add colors, you know, wherever you want. Any markers that you have can be used to add details on here. On the little twirly thing, whatever it's called, I am using a green marker just to make that look a little cooler. And then if you want to add stars, if you want to make your grass look a little more grassy, go for it. Don't forget to put your name on it either. That's something that I forgot to do and that's always really important. I think I'm done. I hope you're done too and I hope you had a great time making this pumpkin art. Come back and do art with me soon. If you like this video, please consider subscribing or liking or commenting. I love to know what you think and I would love to make more videos that people would be interested in. My website is listed here and I've got lots of free videos and resources for teachers.